How to make floating or isolated measurements and break the ground loop with a USB oscilloscope. Grounding of USB oscilloscopes and signal sources. When an ordinary USB oscilloscope is used to measure a signal, it should be noted that the ground lead of the passive oscilloscope probe is connected directly to the ground of the USB port of the computer, which may be connected to the mains earth through the computer's power cord. If the computer is a desktop computer or a laptop computer with a built-in AC power adapter, then you can be certain that the ground lead of the probe is connected to the mains earth. If the computer is a laptop computer with an external AC power adapter, then it depends on the types of power adapter used. If the adapter has only two pins or three pins with a non-conductive earth pin, then you can be certain again that the ground lead of the probe is isolated from the mains earth. That is, floating. If the adapter has three conductive pins, then you will have to check it out. Here are three different cases. 1. This is an IBM ThinkPad laptop AC adapter. 2. As you can see, its DC output is isolated from the mains earth. 2. This is a Dell laptop AC adapter. 3. Its DC negative output is connected to the mains earth through a low resistance path, about 1K ohms. 3. This is another AC adapter. As you can see and hear, its DC output is connected to the mains earth directly. If the laptop is powered from its batteries, then it is isolated from the mains ground. Similarly, the signal source may or may not be isolated from the mains earth depending on the power supply it uses. 2. Ground loop issue A device powered from the mains is usually grounded at the mains earth for safety reason. However, if both the USB oscilloscope and the signal source are grounded at the mains earth, the so-called ground loop issue occurs when the oscilloscope is used to measure a voltage in the signal source like this. By connecting the ground lead of the probe to the ground of the signal source, a ground loop with a very low impedance is formed. The ground loop introduces at least two adverse effects. 1. It may blow up the USB oscilloscope and the signal source. There is always some potential difference between the ground of the signal source and that of the oscilloscope's input BNC connector. The difference can range from microvolts to as high as hundreds of millivolts if the two are grounded at the same building earth. Otherwise the potential difference between the two grounds can be even higher, especially in an industrial environment. There might be a chance that the potential difference is enough to blow up the USB oscilloscope or the signal source. What is more dangerous and likely to happen is that the ground lead of the probe might be mistakenly connected to or accidentally touched a point in the signal source that is not at the earth potential. In that case, that point is shorted to the ground. If that point is capable of outputting a large current, then the dangerous current will flow through the low impedance ground loop and blow up whatever it can. In other words, with the ground loop, you must always remember that you can only do ground referenced measurements. The second adverse effect of a ground loop is that it introduces noises and causes measurement errors. The potential difference between the ground of the signal source and that of the oscilloscope's input BNC connector results in a current flowing through ground path of the probe and creates a voltage drop across it. This voltage drop is added to the measured signal voltage and thus creates measurement error. The ground loop, being a loop of conductor, is also very susceptible to electromagnetic interference. Any conductor in the vicinity that is carrying an AC current generates a varying magnetic field and in turn induces an AC current in the ground loop. 
This induced AC current also contributes to the measurement errors. The measurement error due to the ground loop becomes prominent when the signal voltage to be measured is small. What if both the probe tip and the ground lead are connected to the ground of the signal source like this? It effectively removes the signal voltage from the measurement, leaving only the ground noise being measured. Let's conduct an experiment on this to see what the ground noise looks like and how to remove it. This is a USB oscilloscope, VTDS02810, it has four BNC connectors, two for analog input, one for digital input, and one for analog output. It is bus powered from the USB port and thus no external AC power adapter is required. It is connected to a USB port of the desktop computer. Therefore, its BNC ground is connected directly to the mains earth. Just to check to confirm. Computer's power plug. This is a signal generator. Signal generator's power plug. The ground of its BNC is also connected to the mains ground. Now, I power them from the same AC power socket. Now, I short the probe tip to the probe ground lead. Start the oscilloscope. The oscilloscope is set to a full scale measurement range of plus minus 10 millivolts. DC coupled. As you can see from the screen, the measured signal is a horizontal straight line at around 0 volt with very little noises. Now, connect both the probe tip and its ground lead to the ground of the signal generator. As explained previously, this is to measure the ground loop noise. The waveform has gone out of the measurement range. Implying a quite high DC offset. Change the full scale voltage range to plus minus 200 millivolts, now we can see the horizontal line, it is at about minus 120 millivolts. This DC measurement error results from the DC potential difference between the signal generator's ground and the ground of the USB oscilloscope. Now, change to AC coupling in order to focus on the AC noises. Set the full scale range back to plus minus 10 millivolts. Now we can see that the amplitude of the AC noise is about 2 millivolts. What if I unplug the signal generator so as to break the ground loop? The noise is gone. Plug it in again, the ground loop noises comes back. Disconnecting the earth ground of the desktop signal generator will have safety implication. So here we resort to another method. This is a USB isolator. It is able to provide 1 kV isolation between its input and output, and supply more than 400 mA to the USB device attached to it. It is an idea solution to eliminate the ground loop problems and protect the computer when using a USB oscilloscope. By the way, till today, all USB isolators in the market support USB full speed only. That is, 12 megabits per second. If a USB oscilloscope claims to have built-in USB isolation, then it does not support USB high speed, which is 480 megabits per second. This is really a disadvantage when isolation is not necessary and high speed and streaming mode of the USB oscilloscope and signal generator is desired. Now, the USB isolator is in between the computer and the USB oscilloscope. Start the oscilloscope the ground loop noise is gone. 3. How to avoid the ground loop issue and make floating measurement. 1. Float the USB oscilloscope's computer or the signal source if there is no safety concern. 
The ground loop issue can be avoided if either the USB oscilloscope or the signal source is isolated from the mains earth, that is, floating. This can be done by powering one or both of them by batteries, isolation transformers, or simply disconnecting the ground pin of the power plugs. Be very careful about the safety issue involved, though. 2. Use a USB isolator. A USB isolator can be used to isolate the USB oscilloscope from its computer completely and thus breaks the ground loop while keeping the computer properly grounded. It also provides additional protection to the computer during measurements. 3. A minus B measurement, also known as pseudo differential measurement. In this method, the probe tips of channel A and channel B are connected to the voltage to be measured and the ground leads of the two probes are left unconnected and thus eliminate the ground loop. Then use the oscilloscope's A minus B function to obtain the voltage. We will demonstrate this method to measure mains voltage in another video. 4. Use an active differential probe. Unlike a passive oscilloscope probe, both inputs of an active differential probe do not have a low impedance path to the mains earth and thus avoid the ground loop issue. Usually it can be used to measure a very high voltage safely. But an activation differential probe is quite expensive. This method is recommended if you want to measure high voltages, or achieve channel to channel isolation. With the ground loop being broken, the signal source and the USB oscilloscope has no common reference before connecting the probe. Therefore, we can do floating measurement. We can connect the two black ground leads together. Or swap the connection. It will not damage anything. Verdim's technology. Turn a PC into multiple virtual instruments.